Today's episode is sponsored by Select Savory Seasonings. Have you ever noticed that most barbecue rubs on the market use sugar as the first or second ingredient? Worry no longer. With Select Savory Seasonings, they offer fresh, gourmet, small batch, sugar-free and additive-free seasonings and spices to help you make good, tasty food that is good for you so that you can lose weight, get healthy, and feel amazing. Check them out today at selectsavory.com and use coupon code PODCAST to receive 15% off your first order. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Simple Low Carb Lifestyle Podcast. Today, we are talking to a friend of mine, Trent Holbert. He uh, has written a book called The Food God, which we'll talk about today. He's got a great podcast, the Fit for the Kingdom podcast, um, which is how I first uh, came to get to know him a little bit. And of course, uh, since then, I've been on his podcast. We've talked a few times and um, he's helped me out and so forth. And it's great to have you here today, Trent. It's good to see you. How you doing? Man, it's awesome to be on the show with you, Corey. I appreciate the opportunity to come on and just uh, hang out with you for a little while. Yeah, appreciate you coming. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's start with uh, basically your past. Uh, what, what led you to uh, a low-carb keto lifestyle? And um, we'll go from there. Okay. So yeah, it's a, a little, it's a rabbit hole because it's not as simple as a lot of people might think, right? Um, yeah. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about the low carb lifestyle and, and, and it's kind of tied to weight loss and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, because I happened to lose 60 pounds when I, when I made mm-hmm. that switch, but, uh, but actually my motive for ever going low carb was, um, from really a depressive state. I know that kind of sounds weird. Um, so let yeah. me let me unpack that. Let me explain that because there was a yeah. time in my life, Corey, when um, I had just simply hit the wall. You know, overworked, um, under rest, under recovered, uh, stressed. Um, I had had spinal, you know, I had back issues with chronic pain, and and the extra weight, and all these things were kind of hitting, coming at me from every angle, and uh, and I found myself in just a terrible place. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I knew that, yeah, I needed help emotionally, of course, and I needed help spiritually, but, uh, but I knew none of that was really going to take effect until I got things together physically. Man, I didn't know anything about nutrition at the time. I was like, you know, I was raised in Kentucky on, on, uh, mama's, uh, home cooked meals, you know, and, uh, yep. breaded and fried everything. And, uh, I didn't know any other way of eating. And so I just began to research, uh, really, how do you eat um, to lose weight? How do, you, how do you eat to be able to feel better? Because I know I hurt all the time, like my joints, yeah. everything just hurt. I'd wake up in the morning, I was 35 years old, and I felt like I was 75. And so, um, so yeah, I just began to research and find out that uh, carbs in excess, especially in the presence of sugar and, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, carbs plus high fat. Yes. It was really working against me. So anyway, I made the switch, found paleo. Mm-hmm. Now, paleo, paleo was my open door, uh, to living a new nutritional lifestyle. And, uh, from there, man, things just started rocking and rolling. Things got better. I began to lose, um, weight quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I began to feel better. My, my joints started to, or st- started it's funny started to stop hurting yes I understand and, completely. Uh, <laughs> and and really i began to re- I, i'll just say reverse my age anyway because I, I began to feel not like i was 70 i you know, wake up one day now i feel like i'm 60 and then the next day i feel like i'm 50 and things began to just get better and better and better so yep. yeah i've been doing the low carb thing since 2012 actually okay so you've been for quite a while now Yeah, I started with paleo at first, uh, just because I found that was kind of the thing at the time. Yep. Um, you know, you had uh, Rob Wolf was out there and mm-hmm. um, all these terrific people that were teaching uh, paleo. And yeah, I'm just the type that uh, if this is good, what's better? Right. <laughs> so paleo was good. It was good for me. I was enjoying the uh, the olive oil and the salmon and mm-hmm. uh, and just a lot of those. Uh, a lot of that kind of Mediterranean style, really. Yeah. 
I found this weird word. I'd never heard of it before. Ketosis. I thought, what is that? It sounds funny. Um, and so that's, that's when I learned about the ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. And uh, if paleo was good, the ketogenic diet took me to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. And um, so within just a few months of being paleo, I went keto. And uh, okay. so I haven't looked back since. I've been keto ever since. And it, it makes a big difference. I mean, now I'm the weight loss reason for starting person. And a lot of the things you said, you know, not, not just the weight loss, but the, the constant pain just disappears. I mean, I used to sit at the bottom of the stairs at night to go to bed and go, I really don't want to walk up those stairs because my knees were killing me. And it's amazing how much, like you said, you feel younger. I mean, I even have people now that are like, oh, you're what, 30? Thanks, but I'm 44. I appreciate it. And to just look at you like, no, nah, you can't be that old. That, that old, you look younger. Well, I don't have all that inflammation. Uh, that I used to have. So it does make a big difference. Big time. You know, I was working out because I, I you know, I started to work out. I didn't know a whole lot at the time about working out, mm -hmm. um, but um, had some good coaches, had some people showing me the way, but I may tell you, to, to be honest with you, like it just wasn't working. Like, yeah, I was working out, but I wasn't recovering. I wasn't able to. Yeah. Uh, so the next day I felt wrecked and mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't until I, I really went into deep nutritional ketosis i would say you know um i was i, I became fat adapted ketones were really at the optimal level and so you know um the inflammation levels just went down oxidative stress and uh that actually improved you know my ability my out my my performance output to be able to mm -hmm. to do better go longer go harder yeah. and then recover quicker so it was like I killed a bunch of birds with one stone. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's amazing how, like I said, it, not just the weight loss, but that it, everything just seems to fall into place is a good way to put it. Um, now, something I think a lot of people don't take into consideration with their weight loss and so forth is that they are overworked. Something that you brought up that you were just going, 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 and you never stepped back and, and, you know, and, 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 uh, that was something that was part of the problem, which is being overworked, not sleeping well and everything else. How did that make a difference with switching to keto and uh, making other adjustments along the way to help you recover and rest properly? Well, it's really funny because um, I didn't, and I, and this was so, so long ago, I don't know that anybody could have told me all of the benefits mm -hmm. of ketosis, right? Right. I had to find out for myself. And a lot of things surprised me. You know, there were benefits that I found that I wasn't even looking for. Um, at least not through a ketogenic diet. So mm -hmm. of course my sleep, uh, my sleep got so much better. I was able to, you know, when you're in that deep state of ketosis, you're able, you're able to sleep less, but you sleep deeper. Right. Yeah. So my sleep quality was so much better. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was amazing. Now uh, I didn't, I didn't share this with you, um, but I'll jump into this. I also have an autoimmune disorder. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's a really nasty one. Um, and one of the, one of the greatest benefits that I found because there's no cure for autoimmune and, uh, and I really, there's nothing really, uh, feasible, let's put it that way yeah. um, to manage this autoimmune. But, uh, once I went, once I went eating whole food, paleo and into keto, autoimmune has gone. I mean, yeah. you know, it's in remission. I don't have any of those issues with it anymore. And then here's the really weird stuff, Corey. Um, I, can't, I got over allergies, like seasonal hay allergy left. I yes. used to take shots. I used to take inject injections uh, for that. And um, this is a really weird one, but I lost a I lost, uh, reaction to uh, poison oak and poison ivy. Mm. I would, you know, so, that, I, that I haven't gotten. I still mow the lawn and get the poison ivy. But <laughs> the seasonal allergies, I mean, I used to keep a bottle of Benadryl in the car, uh, which yeah. people are like, well, that could make you drowsy. Well, drowsy or sneezing so bad I can't see where I'm going. I, yeah, I mean. But, you know, I had to have it or else I couldn't, I couldn't function. Yeah, I was on Allegra D, you know, Zyrtec, uh, Rhinocore. I was, you know, had the eye drops. Mm -hmm. My seasonal allergies were so bad it, within, you know, at least a month or two out of the year, um, April and May or May and June around in there in, in Kentucky, mm -hmm. I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't even go outside. Yeah. I would lay in the house with a wet 
wash rag on my eyes, puffy and mm. miserable. And um, I can't tell you how amazing it has been not to even have allergies anymore. <laughs> it's awesome. Especially with how much uh, you like to uh, go out and enjoy uh, God's great creation and go hiking and just one of these days I'm coming to Asheville and you may, I may die following you around the Blue, Blue Ridge Mountains, but we're coming to go for a hike at some point. <laughs> Dude, you got you to come up, man. You got to. It's so uh, gorgeous up here, right? <laughs> it, it's, I mean, I did live down in Greenville, South Carolina for a dozen years, so I, I've been up there quite a bit. And it's, yeah. it's just so beautiful up there. And I couldn't imagine being stuck in, living there and being stuck inside two months out of the year, uh, uh, especially that time of the year. Just miserable miserable so so yeah when i went keto uh, there was things that happened that i knew were going to happen mm -hmm. and that but the surprise of all of the things that happened that i wasn't aware of mm -hmm. and that was just icing on the cake yeah and yeah it, it's amazing how i i've several friends that that's their autoimmune's gone um they get rid of they get rid of a lot of that junk that causes that inflammation and stuff and Yes, it's there, but it's not. Right. Um, which is just tremendous. Now, how did it? Um, how did it also help out with your depression? Uh, you mentioned that you know that was one of the reasons you looked into. Okay, how does diet affect my mm -hmm. uh, affect that? How did that actually help turn things around for you? Yeah. You know, there's a saying: when you feel bad, you feel bad. Mm -hmm. You know, psychosomatic. When your body hurts, it has an effect on your mind and. And uh, I just, like I was mentioning earlier, I just had all of this um, oxidative stress, aches and pains. I just didn't feel good. On top of that, I didn't have energy. I was carrying around extra weight. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't have the energy to play with my kids, to be socially present with the people that I love. Um, and so, of course, that just had a taxing effect on, on me emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, go keto, you know, heal the body drop the weight, pick up the energy because the energy soared. You know, yes. it, it was like uh, just going into this new zone, this new level of not only physical energy, but cognitive energy. Yep. And so I'm dealing with both at this point. Like I feel superhuman, you know, the weight's coming off. I feel good. And I'm, and I have all this energy, this, mm -hmm. and, and it was so crazy. And, and, and this is the God's honest truth, Corey. Um, I began to work out two and sometimes three times a day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I would do, I would do, um, CrossFit in the morning. Okay. I would do power lifting in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, I still had so much energy just to run it off so I could sleep that night. I would go run a 5k, you know, run four or five miles just to like run off the extra energy. Yep. So with all that taking place, you know, when you, I said, when you feel bad, you feel bad. Well, when you feel good, you feel good. You feel like, good. So, yep. And I just began to feel alive again. Like I've got, I'm able to be socially present with my kids, my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got energy to do the things that I want to do. Yep. And there's just this reciprocating effect. This it's an, it's a, it's a return on all of that investment. And so just yep. mentally, I just began to feel so much better. And then there's the other thing is this, um, because when, you know, ketones are anti-inflammatory inflammatory by nature. So yep. not only to the joints, but to the brain. Yes. And so uh, my, literally my brain began to heal from being carb loaded for so many years and brain fog. And um, I would imagine even a down regulation of my neurotransmitters and the ability to produce GABA and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, serotonin and uh, dopamine. But, uh, you know, with this, uh, lack of inflammation in the brain, I, I'm just optimized. And so I'm just yeah. like mentally on point. Which that reminds me of um, uh, Amy Berger's book, uh, Alzheimer's Antidote, and how mm. that, that, you know, they, they've yet to find a cure for Alzheimer's. And yet a lot of, a lot of uh, theories are that, well, it's that carb loading and stuff, the brain is actually protecting itself. That's where all that, that uh, coding on the brain comes from. Mm. And yeah, did lots of people where they just they give even exogenous ketones and they start to perk up mm -hmm. and it helps it helps get their cognitive functions moving again and that's not even a dietary change that's just here take a pill not not recommending that that's not how you get into ketosis to get healthy but um it's amazing how it, it makes such a big difference in the brain when you feed it the fuel that it needs um 
the common mis misperception is, well, the brain needs sugar. It does. But last I checked, our bodies were um, amazingly and wonderfully created by God to produce all the, all the sugar we need. Uh, gluconeogenesis is a wonderful process that allows us, hey, if we don't have it, I know from uh, ingesting it, the body's going to take care of it for you. So we don't need to eat it. But the ketones that our body produces really gives it the fuel it needs to, to do what it needs to do. Uh, like you said, that, that cognitive function makes a big difference once you get the get the, the fog lifts, the sun comes out. I mean, <laughs> is it, it, that's about how it feels like, isn't it? it? It really is. And I had a lot of people criticize me because was, it was back then. You know, it, mm -hmm. it has, hadn't become mainstream yet. And so to that argument that you just mentioned, well, your brain needs sugar. Um, and you're right. The body is quite capable of producing as much glucose as it needs. Yep. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Correct. Uh, but there is essential fatty acids. Yep. And, um, and so, you know, when, when your fat is being broken down and um, producing ketones, you know, out of the liver, man, the brain thrives on that. Mm -hmm. and I had people tell me that I would die. Like literally they would say, yeah. you, you can't live that way. You're going to die. And um, I didn't do this to prove that, but it was something that happened in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I did a 30 day fast and I had fasted for years, you know, as a Christian, I was just a spiritual discipline that I've always tried to utilize um, to yeah. uh, heighten my, uh, my own presence with God. But I suffered through it because I didn't know how to do it. Right. You know, as a, as a car burner. And, uh, and I thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm fat adapted. Why don't I go ahead and try fasting that way? Mm -hmm. And so I ended up doing a 30 day fast, 30 days, zero sugar. Yep. And, uh, guess what didn't happen? <laughs> I didn't I die. I think you didn't die. <laughs> so, so there, that blew that theory out of the water. Yep. It, it, but yet people still come back with it. We just got to keep talking about it and letting yeah. people know it's not a lot of what we've been taught is not the truth. And um, you've been doing that quite a bit. Uh, you, you're definitely into more of a holistic health approach and trying to help people along um, to know how to do that properly. So how are you trying to help out other people now uh, with uh, the, a holistic approach to health and lifestyle? Right. Yeah. Because I found out it wasn't just a, uh, a one side fix all. Um, and it, it, even for me, I, I needed help physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was for sure. But I also needed help emotionally and spiritually. And I found out that those three things, and I think we already know these things, but I needed to yeah. be reminded they're interconnected. They really can't be separated. Mm -hmm. So after I, uh, I guess after I became experienced in healing my own body, it was time for me to repay that blessing back to others and it really became a passion of mine so uh, from there i just went back to school and and uh, earned uh, multiple certifications in, in personal training and just began to work with people on that level okay um, and that was kind of the starting point but uh, it wasn't enough for me and so i just continued uh, to grow my business and uh, started the trent hobart fitness um, llc um, right. and began to work with people uh, coaching and consulting all over the world and uh, helping people to see and walking them through this, 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 this pathway of optimal health that I believe is holistic. Yeah. And uh, so I've been doing that for several years now and started the fit for the kingdom podcast because mm -hmm. I just couldn't get the word out far enough, Corey. I was yeah. like, Hey, this is good, but uh, I want everybody to know. And yep. so started the podcast as a way, as a means just to continue to educate people on the, the, the whole holistic perspective of health. Yeah. And that's, I mean, same reason I started this podcast is for people that have been like me, overweight, sick and tired of being sick and tired, and they want to lose weight, get healthy and feel amazing. Well, how do you do that? There's just so much information out there. Who do you listen to? And that's the whole idea here is to let people know it, it is simple. It's not hard. It's not difficult. And you can't, how many, I mean, how many consultations can you do in a day? Right. You know, if you do one an hour and it's from wake to sleep, you're getting 10 to 12 people. And of course, then there's no family time or church time or anything else in that case. But with a podcast and videos and the internet, it's amazing how we can reach out and help people out along the way. And it's just, 
I understand the feeling. It's you got to give back somehow. Uh, I, you know, I want people just like you to understand what it feels to actually have your body optimally working. Uh, mm -hmm. It is amazing. Uh, now, more recently, you've been getting into a really big word and uh, epigenetics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did listen to your podcast about that. And I'm not even going to say anything other than what in the world is it? And why do we need it? Or why should we do it? And how have you helped other people uh, along with it? I appreciate you asking that question. Um, you know, as a personal trainer, I found I got frustrated, man, I got frustrated because working with people's diets, working with people's supplementation, working with their workout plans, it's all fun. But at the end of the day, it's a guessing game. Mm hmm. And uh, that's for any personal trainer. And as a matter of fact, that goes for any doctor. And yeah. I work with a doctor. So my, my partner is um, a board certified family medicine doctor, Dr. Gus Vickery, mm -hmm. uh, here in Asheville. He wrote the book, Authentic Health, the genius of a guy. But we, what we learned was, or what we realized was that all that, we're, all that we do, I mean, all the time that we spend on diagnose he diagnoses our program um but we still have to allow for time to see how a person reacts how are they going to respond right. to this diet to this workout program to this supplementation uh etc we have something Corey, that um we have had since the day that our mom and dad created us we're going to have it until the day that we die it's our own dna Yep. It is our specific design. And so we decided to go into this. Um, I believe it's actually, I honestly believe it's the future of health because it takes out the guesswork. Right. We can take a person such as yourself, uh, retrieve your DNA, sequence that DNA out into the raw data and extrapolate that to determine mm -hmm. not what is across the board, what do people enjoy, what, what works for a lot of people, paleo, Mediterranean, Whole30, keto, etc. But what works for Corey? What mm -hmm. is specific to his DNA? Mm -hmm. And um, when we look at our DNA, what we find in every single human being is imperfection. Right. We're, 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 none of us are identical. We are, we, are, we are each very different and we have our own design, but none of our DNA is completely perfect without any, any flaws. Some genes are turned off, some yep. are turned on, and that, that might not be working in our, to our benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the science of epigenetics is this, it's taking the DNA and expressing it in a new way. You, you, you don't change the gene, but you can change the way it's expressed. Right. And um, so what we do then is take, so we're taking the DNA, we're evaluating it, and then we're coaching people in how to or why they might need to and then how to express that that those genes in a way that benefits their health mm -hmm. and then so that ways i guess that that can be done is through obviously diet and lifestyle you know maybe yeah they have a specific gene that eating x y or z is causing you know not to be able to lose weight as, as efficiently as possible for exactly. example um, what are some examples that you have had with some of your clients or just, you know, in general of how epigenetics, you know, you, they're, they, you know, they've been frustrated. What I'm doing is not working. You know, I've been, I've been eating like I should so forth and so on. And then, you know, of course they had the test, you sat down and went through everything and said, you know what, do you eat a lot of this or are you doing this? And they go, well, yeah, of course it's healthy. Isn't it? Sure is healthy. Just not for Trent Holbert. Exactly. Uh, so, so your DNA is going to give us a picture of what your plate needs to look like. Not only macronutrients, mm -hmm. um, protein, fat, carbohydrates. It's even going to tell us the kind of macronutrients. So, so, so you're going to determine, your body has already determined how it likes saturated fat versus uh, monounsaturated fat, right? Okay. So some people, some people are doing a very good job on keto, mm -hmm. but they're having... Um, they're having saturated fat when their DNA says you actually need to be doing more monounsaturated fat. So in other words, let's cut out the dairy and cheese, mm -hmm. the cream, the heavy cream. Yeah. Let's cut that out and let's add 
olive oil because that's what your DNA says you really need. And then they begin okay. to see a major difference. Um, another example is if we go further from the macronutrients, we get into the micronutrients. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to look at your body's needs on its ability um, to handle uh, minerals. Right. Um, so iron, zinc, copper, selenium, and, and getting into um, vitamins, vitamin D. Right. You know, uh, do, are you the type of person that needs more sunshine? Are you... Are you the type of person, for instance, maybe you have the, uh, the variant for the MTFR gene that's mm -hmm. going to cause, um, it's, really, it's called undermethylation, but it's a detox pathway of your body, and you're not able to absorb uh, B vitamins like you know, most of the general population would be able yeah, to that, do. That was one of the ones I was thinking of as you were talking is some people have to take methylated B vitamins because their body can't do it itself. Yeah. And, and so think about this, not only is that going to be a benefit to your diet, once you realize that, let's say, for instance, you have that variant for the MTFHR gene, but if you're an undermethylator, you may be dealing with a lot of other issues. So if you're not, if you're not methylating B vitamins, this could also be leading to headaches, depression, addictive di behaviors. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, contraindicators to someone who doesn't methylate uh, B vitamins. And so uh, we're able to see that as well. Then we get into hormones, uh, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, insulin. We're going to be able to see what your insulin resistance score is. I mean, the day that you were born, Corey, you, mm -hmm. your body was already designed to be able to handle so much insulin. Huh, okay. So, so someone with a lower insulin score is going to be able to handle um, more carbohydrates versus someone with a higher insulin score. Right. And that's just uh, the fault of the, uh, the mixture of genes that came from mom and dad. Exactly. It's just... And it is what it is. But, but knowing that, you know, some people are more predisposed to type two diabetes than mm -hmm. others. Yep. Okay. Which we see, we see a lot. I mean, you see people that you're like, well, wait a minute, that guy's got to be diabetic. Look at him. No, his body can just, store fat. He's not diabetic. His That's insulin right. Is normal. And, and you'll see, you can see skinny people be type two diabetic. Yep. Uh, or they'll also have, um, fatty liver disease. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I, have, I know several people that it's like skinny as a rail and I, I know what their favorite treats are. And, I'm, and <laughs> it, it worries me because I'm like, I know what sugary treat they love and I know what it can be doing on the inside of their body, mm -hmm. even though outside they look just fine. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's something I, I think, you know, uh, people in general need to understand is, uh, with a low carb or keto diet, it's not just as we've already mentioned weight loss. It's health and optimization. Yeah. Uh, in my case, it's it's not so much weight loss, even though I would would I like to lose more weight? Sure. But I'm as healthy as I've ever been. I've got more energy than I ever have. Now it's a long it's the long game. It's longevity. Right. And you know I want to be able to be 90 years old and run around with the great grandkids. Mm -hmm. If I, if if we get that far. <laughs> so that, you know that's. Viewpoint and perspective has a lot to do with uh, many times on, on why we start things and then why we continue. Uh, my why has changed so many times since I've started. It's ridiculous, as I'm sure mm -hmm. yours has also. Sure. Um, and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about priorities and what are your priorities. And, you know, not everybody that does the epigenetics is really interested in having a six pack. That's fine. Yeah. That's great. Right. Uh, because we are talking about quality of life. We're talking about mm -hmm. longevity. We're talking about preventative care. Yes. You know, so I don't want people to have to go to a doctor. I'm thankful for doctors, but I would rather people not ever have to go to a doctor. And I think most people would right. say the same thing. Uh, so we're able to look at people's sleep. What, mm -hmm. how many hours a night should you be getting? Uh, how deep should you be going? You know, your genetics is going to play a part of that. Uh, we're going to be able to look at um, your detoxification pathways what is your mold sensitivity uh, mm -hmm. versus your envirotoxins like BPAs and thiolates and smog and cigarette smoke and those sort of things. Uh, you know, so we're able to see that and how your body handles those things because mm -hmm. those are going to, those are actually going to affect every other part of your life as well. Right. We're able to look at the athletic performance. Are you a sprinter? Or are you an endurance runner? You know, are you power sprint? Or are you endurance? Um, what is your recovery rate? Are you a person mm -hmm. that, should take a day or two or three off a week. 
um, we're going to look at soft tissue um, damage um, propensity. You know, mm -hmm. are you more prone to tearing a rotator cuff or um, or an ACL issue? Okay. No, we're and again back to the hormones. We're going to be able to look at um, you know, are you especially if you're a female? You know, what are your vitamin D and K two needs? What are your calcium needs? Um, you know, when we look at the female, you know, as she ages who might be predisposed to um, osteoporosis. Right. Um, you know, knowing those things, the earlier we can get it is gonna provide more benefit um, for someone's life. I mean, so we've got those, we will have that mapped out. You'll have that the rest of your life and you can live your life based on your specific DNA. Yep. That's in a nutshell. Just some of the uh, two questions, we'll start with the one. Um, how early should you do an epigenetics test? I got a five and seven year old, for example. So um, my suggestion is as early as possible because it's okay. a saliva swab. Okay. You know, so you could take a child when, you know, get home from the hospital uh, after birth and just swab the you inner. You would know. You would know. Take the inside yep. of their cheek, swab it, and you will from, look at that. I mean, think about that. From the bassinet throughout their entire life, you will have this massive report of information that mm -hmm. shares their DNA. So my family's got, we got our DNA. We, we, we bind it into books. It's cataloged into our library yep. and we will always have that. It's not going to change. And uh, what an investment. Yeah. And then you can better raise your children. Obviously we want to keep them fit and healthy and everything else, but now we would know, okay, well what we think could be healthy may not be healthy for one or both of them. And you can adjust accordingly. Uh, so that as they grow up, they're, they're even, they're optimized. I mean, you can optimize your children's health uh, right into adulthood and until the Lord calls them home. Oh yeah. Uh, which is something I never even thought of. I mean, it's, yeah. it, that's, uh, that's neat to know. I mean, I know, you know, all of my clients really are adults, but I keep, yep. I actually keep putting that out there, Corey. I'm like, I'm preaching it. Like, you know, if you're a parent, I know you want your DNA done, but um it would be wise. I mean, if you are, if you're able to make that investment, your children are where yeah. it's at. Like the earlier that you can get in there and get that DNA, the better. Which could uh, prevent them from having long-term adverse effects throughout their life. I, just using my family as an example, when our Daniel was born, our first son, I told my wife, he's my, our kids are not going to deal with what I did. They will be eating a low carb or a keto based diet day one. Right. Because now that I know what I know, you know, I don't want them to deal with pain, aggravation, uh, you know, knees hurting. I used as a kid, I thought it was normal that, you know, every couple of weeks I'd wake up at three in the morning with such intestinal pain. I'd have to sit, go downstairs and sit down for a couple hours. That wasn't normal. That was my body going that bread and that grain is driving is not good. It's inflaming mm -hmm. me. And it's like, I don't want them to ever have to deal with that. So even more so if just eating properly can help with help them live optimally how much more so if you actually know hey this is you know you can fine-tune them just like you would an engine and a sports car uh, which is now i gotta start to figure out how to do that for my kids yeah and here's the caveat i mean some people hear epigenetics and they hear dna and they think that are we designing our children <laughs> <laughs> no we're not changing we're not choosing or changing the dna we're just changing yep the way our DNA is expressed in the body in order yep. to live healthy. And I would say it's similar to, again, using a sports car analogy, it's the same engine, uh, but you're making tweaks to the engine to, ha to have it either, you want more fuel efficiency, do you want more power? You're, get you're tweaking it in such a manner that even though it's the same thing, it's working better in the direction you want it to. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing with our bodies and with the epidemic epigenetics i can't say it straight in our dna uh, you also mentioned sleep a few uh, a couple of minutes ago um you do any like sleep optimization using aura rings or anything like that to track you know how deep you are sleeping um and how has that helped out either with you or with clients and what do you recommend using i look at sleep i go so deep into sleep Corey, because it's so important and so that even the dna report is going to tell us a lot about your sleep needs mm -hmm. and people are different we have different circadian rhythms. You know, my kids, they're homeschooled. And um, so we actually you, have. <laughs> I, listened to the, I listened to the podcast that you talked about this the other day. Okay. So we actually have two different sleep schedules for two different kids. They're two years apart. Doesn't matter. They've got different genes. 
yep. uh, or different DNA makeup. And so they require different timing. So circadian rhythm. So one, we wake up earlier than the other. Yep. Uh, we, we're homeschooled, so we have the benefit of doing that. But nevertheless, um, we are a family that believes in preparing for sleep the moment we wake up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the way that we wake up matters. Um, the first meal of the day matters. Yes. The, I mean, so do the rest of the meals of the day, of course, but so does the activity of our day. Um, as we go further into the night, um, you know, the timing of sleep, the artificial blue light, um, the tablet time, the screen time, the room temperature, um, you know, it's kind of all of that. We're hitting it from every angle possible so that we can have the most natural quality mm -hmm. sleep that we can get. And, uh, and I wake up in the morning and I check my uh, heart rate variability yep. and that's going to tell me really, how was it, you know, how recovered are you and are you ready to hit it again today? Or maybe today's a rest day. Right. And uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're a family that believes in using technology as well as um, just environmental practices. And that's a lot of what I do too, is help people, you know, take that DNA profile and help people construct lifestyle practices and environmental changes in order to get the best because it's not just here's what you eat or here's what supplement to take but it really is here's what time you need to go to bed and here's some practices let's do some blackout curtains let's do mm -hmm. some blue light blocking glasses let's do some whole tones frequency let's do some chili pad in your bed you know cool things down whatever you know whatever yeah. whatever for that person is most beneficial and that's, again, it goes back to the holistic approach. It's not just what are you ingesting? Everything impacts our bodies from yeah. the moment. Well, I was going to say for the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep, but even while we're sleeping, everything makes a difference. And something I never even thought of, uh, like you said, if you wake up and you check your HRV, oh, I didn't sleep well last night. Maybe I shouldn't go hard at the gym today. I may use it more as a recovery day because your body didn't recover while it was supposed to over overnight, uh, which I don't think that's something most people would even consider. Hey, I had a bad night's rest. Well, I still got to get up and, you know, tough through it. And yet that may be a kind of productive to what you really need to be doing. So mm -hmm. um, that's it. That's interesting at home. Yeah, um, I mean, and it may not, you know, I know people have to get up and still go to work, you know, so true. you can't just stay home. But if you know what that HRV reading is, you, you know, you could at least change some of the or tweak your day so right. so maybe maybe because of the fact you need to eat more calories that day maybe you need to hydrate more that yep. day maybe maybe taking a little bit of magnesium or maybe some zinc mm -hmm. to help with the recovery and so just knowing that it yeah i still got to get up and go to work but sure yeah so there's some things i can tweak which also goes back to um having your epigenetics, you, you'll know not only that I have a bad sleep, but you'll have a, a better, again, fine tuning of those, those minerals and everything else that, okay, bad night's rest. I, this is what I need to optimize for today to help me properly recover and hopefully get a better night's rest the next night. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just keep going back to the engine analogy in my head. It's just like tuning an engine to run like it's supposed to. Our bodies are the exact same way. Um, yeah. But you know, a lot of people own a valuable sports car and they don't have the owner's manual. Yep. You know, your body is an amazingly engineered thing, yep. but we don't have, we don't have the schematics, mm -hmm. which is our DNA. Uh, but your DNA is going to tell you, this is how quickly you should be falling asleep. Right. Believe it or not, your DNA is going to tell you. Um, so let's say, for instance, as an example, genetically speaking, you should be falling asleep 10 to 15 minutes from lying down. Okay. Okay. Your DNA says that, but you say to me, well, Trent, we have an issue. It takes me 45 minutes to fall asleep. I say, ah, all right then. Then there's yeah. something that is outside of your genetics. It's playing a part and right. it could be going back to stress. Is your mind mm -hmm. struggling to shut off? Yep. Maybe you got, maybe you have some things you're worried about and we need to talk about practicing some gratitude or prayer mm -hmm. uh, or journaling or, um, you know, maybe, maybe you're, meal timing is off. You're eating too yep. closely to, to bedtime and that's prolonging your ability to fall asleep. So, so just knowing the genetics and say, you know what, Corey, all right, here's what your genetics say. Here's what's happening. Okay. 
we need to we need to figure this out and get back to what your body says you should be doing. An unruh panel for your body. That, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah. um, sometimes my brain doesn't want to work even when it's fueled properly. But anyway, <laughs> um, you also wrote a book uh, that came out earlier this year, uh, The Food God. And why don't you go uh, give us a little background on that. Obviously, you don't want to go through all of it because, well, you want people to go buy the book. I have bought the book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it goes into greater detail um, about Trent's background and um, with his health journey and where he's at, and but also has a lot of information on food and how it affects our bodies and so forth. So a lot of it we already covered just in general with what we've discussed, but uh, why don't you give us a, a little bit about what, what prompted you to write the book? Because if I remember correctly, you said, I never planned on ever writing a book, and here I did. I wrote a book right. and go from there. Whoever plans on writing their first book, That's true. I don't know. Um, you know, I wrote the book because I'd never read one like it. Mm -hmm. The things that are in the book, I kept going back to in my head, like, this is important. This is important. But there wasn't, um, I'd not, I'd never found a resource that, that had, had it in there. You know, so I took my own personal experience of uh, complete wreckage and, yes. uh, you know, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and, uh, and, and walk you through how it, it took a, tr a change of perspective and of not just a perspective, but a, a, um, a lifestyle of change of eating. So how I viewed food to how I used food to change things, not only physically, right. Um, but here's the surprise to a lot of people, but also spiritually and, uh, emotionally. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but in all of that, it really is. I mean, it's a, um, it, it's an autobiography. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. It's a theological mm -hmm. thesis because it actually takes you through an entire biblical survey of yep. food and its importance to connecting uh, human beings to our creator, yep. um, to connecting human beings to each other, mm -hmm. as well as connecting human beings to our own personal optimal health. And uh, so from a Christian perspective, we really see... Um, the importance of food through that biblical uh, perspective, which that's yep. what Food for the Kingdom really is, and Train Halbert mm -hmm. Fitness is holistic fitness from a biblical perspective, and uh, and so then it's it, it's actually got some uh, quite a bit of science involved as well, and and talking about fasting and talking about um, uh, digestives and and bacteria um, profile in the gut, and just yep. kind of a lot of the biohack that goes into understanding the body in a deeper level. And so the book really just kind of allowed me to throw, throw my knowledge and experience into this thing and just, um, and then, and then shove it out there and say, here you go, folks, food really is this important. It will connect you on all levels of health. Yes. And it, it does make, it, it does. It's amazing how food, you know, as I read it, it's, especially with looking at it from a biblical perspective of how food was, is so vital in so many ways, not just for our health and how we feel, but and how, how it was used throughout the Bible for various other things for worship and so forth and how it's involved in everything. Uh, it makes a big difference in our lives. And uh, where can they, uh, where can they get the book? First of all, well, um, my first answer is going to be Trent Holbert fitness.com because that's going to land you on my website. Yes. And uh, I would love for people to go there, not only to buy the book, but you can listen to my podcast. You can check out my services um, the things that, that I offer there as well. So, I, so I'll direct people over there, but when you yep. click the link on the uh, webpage, it's also going to send you to Amazon because the book yep. is on Amazon. You can order it there as well and get it sent and delivered pretty quickly. And that's where I ordered it from and, um, got it relatively quickly. I was a uh, pre-order, so I got it before it came out and it, it's a great book. It's an excellent read. It'll, it'll get you to stop and think. Um, and give you a different perspective on things. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, now, a couple of questions that we uh, like to do when we get towards the end of things is, first of all, what is your favorite simple keto or low carb meal that just, there's, you know, you don't have to think about it. Just kind of do it and you go. Yeah, it's easy. New York strip and broccoli. And, uh, and broccoli is the, uh, it's the option, right? Cause I could just yeah. make a meal out of the New York strip. Um, so I found this, I found this, um, this butcher 
and I was, I'm, I'm trying to pick out my meat and everything. And, and I like to buy the fresh cuts and yeah. So he picks out this New York strip and he sh starts showing me what I'd never realized before. And, and, and it's like, don't take this home and eat it today. He's like, take it and put it in this plastic bag mm -hmm. and hang it up inside the refrigerator overnight. And he said, I'm telling you, it'll change the way it tastes uh, huh. tremendously. So I started doing that. I get this New York strip, I bring it home, I hang it up in the refrigerator overnight and uh, with the seasoning. And um, I got this, I got this friend that makes this really, really good um, low carb, sugar-free seasoning okay I wonder, who, select, I wonder who that could be select savory seasoning <laughs> <laughs> so i'll douse it right with this yep. with this uh steak seasoning hang it up in the refrigerator and the next day um i'll sear it in my cast iron skillet throw the butter to it um and then the broccoli is just as simple as just um you know heating it up in a pan of water and uh throwing the butter and sea salt to that. Right. I'm done. <laughs> Did he explain why hanging it in the fridge makes a difference? I'm just curious. Uh, he not, not, I mean, he didn't really understand any science or didn't tell me any science about it, but, but he was like, I'm telling you, put these spices on and hang it up. He said it, it, um, it'll be totally different. And huh. I have no idea. I took, I took the witch doctor at his word the mad scientist I came home, I did it. And man, that's the only way I'll eat it now. <laughs> now I got to try that when I get, they won't be a strip. I got ribeyes in the freezer. So I'll have to try that for next time. Uh, same thing. Same thing. It doesn't matter the cut of meat. Just yeah. hang it up. Got to drain something out of it. But, all I can know, figure. You think about the way people handled meat and I grew up on the farm, man. I mean, all meat is hung. True. And, and so. anymore today though, it's in those containers flat and so forth and so on. So, yeah, even when you used to go to the time. old the old school butcher, all the meat's hanging in the window, and you can yep. go in and pick out. And, yeah, I want so. that one, and off you go. Yeah, yeah. And what's one, well, just one simple tip that you would recommend to somebody, maybe they're just getting into low carb, or they're confused and don't know what to do, what, what just one simple tip to help them li uh, start or live a low carb lifestyle? I always say, no, this is the Simple Low Carb Lifestyle Podcast. Let's give it as simple as possible, and the lowest hanging fruit for me when I started was, you know, I didn't go keto. I didn't go from having 200 grams of carbs a day to 20 grams of carbs a day. Yeah. I, I, it was a, it was progression. And, um, so for me, the most simplest thing to get started now, I didn't say it's easy. I just said it's simple. Yes. And that was cutting out liquid calories, mm -hmm. you know, because you think about a hundred or let's see, 120 calories and 12 ounces of Pepsi, but, or any cola, but how much sugar is in that? You know, you're talking yes. about upwards of 60 grams, maybe, um, of sugar. Um, that's 60 packets of sugar. Yeah. And a lot of people, they don't realize how much they're having. And you really sometimes have to step things down. Don't just dump in, jump into the deep end, but start stepping yep. it down. And so, you know, I thought, well, if I can drink water or calorie free, sugar-free and start working my way toward that then things will be a yeah. lot easier and that's i actually know a gentleman uh, that i used to work with in a roundabout way and he made a comment about he'd lost a bunch of weight and i took two steps back and you had lost weight and ironically he worked at the home depot in Asheville, the one down in the hole i forget uh which road that was on but anyway that's uh, i was, was there this morning yep and uh, I, I'm like, you're Funny. kidding me. He had lost, I mean, he, his belt wrapped halfway around his back uh. and he was not a small guy. He's like, that's what I've lost. And I said, what? He's like, no more Coke. And, you know, that was the big thing he cut out first. And then he backed off to no more fast food, started eating real food. And he wasn't even doing low carb in any, by any stretch, but he just, the liquid mm. calories was the first thing he cut out. Yep. And he quit the the little Debbie snacks. He did kind of those two at the same time. He's like, every sure. night it was a half a pack of little Debbies and a gallon of milk. He's like, I cut that out. And he's like, boom. Um, he went from, you know, pushing 500 pounds to probably three and wow. about a year's time. So it was amazing how but that, that's a great idea. Just a little at a time, especially if you're one of those people that you've tried it before and you're always like, I crave, I crave. Well, don't jump into the deep end. 
one week I get rid of this and extra week I get rid of this and titrate down your uh, carbohydrates as you go to get down to that 20 ish level or whichever is optimal for your body, mm -hmm. uh, which is a great tip. If people want to get a hold of you, you've already mentioned TrentHolbertFitness.com. Is there anywhere else they can hunt you down and uh, either follow you or talk to you? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's, of course, the easiest, the, the largest platform to get, get to my content. Uh, but if you're a subscriber on any podcasting channel, um, then look up, definitely look up the Fit for the Kingdom podcast. Uh, check out the episode that, uh, that, that Corey and I did. That was a great podcast, uh, just me interviewing him. Yep. Now the tables have turned, but fit for the kingdom podcast on whatever platform you use. Um, Trent Holbert on Instagram, Trent Holbert fitness on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so that, that would pretty much get it. And then the Good. food God on Amazon or the website or the website. It's on the website. It, it is on the it. website. Remember go to yeah. the website first and then go, go to <laughs> Amazon. You go. Thank you. So, well, Trent, thanks for uh, being here. We will put all of that in the show notes. So people can take a look at those and, uh, they can reach out to you if need be. I appreciate your time and it's been good talking to you again. Man, it's good to hang out with you again too, Corey. Thanks a lot. Yep. Have a great night. You too.